good morning, good morning. We greet you in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ on another glorious Sunday. We've come to celebrate the goodness of who Jesus is and who he yet can be. So wherever you are, type in, touch in, text in, let us know where you are so we can celebrate the joy of the Lord together. And wherever you may be, even if you're driving, just don't close your eyes, but build an altar even in your heart right now as we go before God's throne in prayer. Gracious God, our Father, we say thank you for yet one more Sunday day. God, we say thank you that you kept us from last week until this week. We say thank you. You kept us from last night even until this morning, God. So now that we have come into this place, we purposed ourselves to worship and to praise your name. God, we give you express permission to come into this service. God, do whatever it is you need to do. Anoint the building, God, from the rafters to the foundation. Flood this place with your spirit, God, as your word comes forth. Pour into the preacher, God, as he pours out to these your people. And as we receive, God, let us go out into a dying world and declare your goodness so somebody can have a right relationship with you. God, we say thank you for what you're doing even in this season. We are excited. We anticipate the glorious wonders of your work. In Jesus' name, we accept this now. We receive this even in advance, God. And we say amen.
blessing. My blessing. My blessing. My blessing. My blessing. My blessing. My blessing. All the way. And if my, my blessing. Oh my. Oh my. Anything, anything I need. Uh, yeah. Amen, amen, yes, amen. How many of us know this morning that it, our blessing is on the way, amen, that God has called us, God has chosen us, God has picked us, that our blessing is on the way. I'm excited to see you all this morning. Do us a favor, amen. Minister Elam has already greeted you, but let us know where are you worshiping from this morning, amen. The brothers have been leading us in worship, amen, letting us know that the blessing of the Lord is on our way, and we praise God for these mighty men. Amen. And then we thank God for these amazing musicians. Amen. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. We are excited because you all know what this week is. Amen. This week is that famous Thanksgiving dinner, that yes, famous yes. Thanksgiving holiday that many of us love. It's that time of year. Amen. Amen. But my prayer is that many of you won't be like Pastor Kill, uh, that we won't eat ourselves into a coma. Amen. I'm trying my best this week to restrict my intake. Amen. You all know that once you see everything on the table. You just want a little of everything. Amen. Amen. So we pray that this week we will be able to, to fest, feast in moderation. Amen. And not just dig in, not just pig in, and not just go all out. Amen. Amen. And amen. And so my brothers and sisters, we are excited. You all know in two weeks, exactly two weeks from today, not next Sunday, but the Sunday after next, we are excited that we are returning back into church. Amen. The very first Sunday in December, Communion Sunday, Amen. Sunday, December the 5th, we are returning back to church. Amen. And let somebody know. Share the word. Amen. Good. That's right. We are returning back to in-person worship here at Durham AME Church. Amen. At Emmanuel AME Church in Durham, North Carolina. Amen. I'm all excited messing up the words. Amen. And then the night before the first Sunday where we return to in-person worship, Saturday, December the 4th, we will be having Noel at 2018. Noel at 2018. Somebody do me a favor and just type that into the chat. Noel at 2018. Noel, what is that? That's just simply, that's the beginning and kickoff of our Advent season, our Christmas season celebration. We are having an amazing festival outside in the parking lot. Noel, you all know Noel at 2018. 2018, right here, Riddle Road. Share with somebody. Come on out. It's open for the entire family. Amen. It is for everyone. We're going to come out. We're going to celebrate God. Amen. We'll have vendors. We'll have food trucks. We'll have activities. It will be a little something for everybody. Amen. You can come out and support black vendors. Amen. Where you will be able to come and purchase gifts and things of that nature. So we are excited and look forward to seeing you all on Saturday, November the 4th. And then once again on Sunday, December, excuse me, Saturday, November the 4th. 4th, and then Sunday, December the 4th, excuse me, pastors all jacking up everything this morning, and then Sunday, December the 5th, amen, amen, amen. Solicit your prayers, amen, for everyone who's listed on our sick and shut-in list. Uh, ask for your prayers for each and every one of our brothers and sisters, amen, on the sick and shut-in shut -in list, and all those who have been going through. Then we all know the holiday season can be challenging and trying for many persons that this season uh, is a time where uh, many people just, just need a little bit of extra love and extra encouragement. Um, and so if you know anybody during this holiday time who's going through, who needs your love, needs your prayers, reach out to somebody. Do something kind for somebody. Send them an encouraging text, an email. Simply pick up the phone and call them. Um, and just let them know that you're thinking about them, that you're praying for them, and we're believing that God will keep and comfort all those uh, during these holiday season. Amen. Amen. This week we're excited because God has called us to be a blessing to 150 families. Amen. Being able to feed 150 persons. And so we thank you, the Emmanuel family. We thank you for even our virtual visitors who have been pouring in and being able to be a blessing to us, just showing so much of your support. Amen. Um, through giving of perishable, non-perishable items and through giving of the monetary gifts and donations 
Conference. And so on this week, we are taking the food literally, amen, to the families to be able to feed them on this coming Tuesday. On this Tuesday, we thank God so much for Sister Emma Devine, who's been leading this, this project, working so hard to be able to be a blessing. Uh, and we will be sending out the food. Thank God for Brother Brunson and all the trustees, amen, who signed up to agree just to be able to drop off a turkey and drop off some food that families and those who are less fortunate uh, will be able to have a grateful holiday season and Thanksgiving on this week. So we thank you, we thank you, we thank you, amen, and we thank you again, amen. We're going to jump straight into the word, and then the men are going to come back and close us out, amen. They got another song they've been working on, um, but I'm excited for the word this morning, and I want to get straight to the word. Uh, this morning, this Sunday before Thanksgiving Sunday, God laid it on my heart to preach from this sermon topic, chosen to work chosen to work. Somebody just go ahead and type that into the chat. Chosen to work. Yeah, we'll, we'll focus in this morning on the Gospel of Luke, the 10th chapter, verses 1 through 3. That's the Gospel of Luke, chapter 10, verses 1 through 3. Here now in the reading of God's Word. The Lord now chose 72 other disciples and sent them ahead in pairs to all the towns and places he planned to visit. These were his instructions to them. The harvest is great, but the workers are few. So pray to the Lord who is in charge of the harvest. Ask him to send more workers in the field. Now go and remember that I am sending you out as lambs among the wolves. Amen. Verse 1 said, the Lord chose 70. My beloved brothers and sisters, I've already shared with us our sermon topic this morning, chosen to work. It's interesting that when you think about being chosen, you think about being hand-picked. You think about being selected. In fact, this Thursday, many of us have intentionally chosen the turkey that will be on our table. That when you go to the store, when you go to the grocery store, regardless of the grocery store you shop at, that you can see many turkeys sitting there, but you don't just grab the first turkey you see and put it in the cart. But in fact, many of us are so particular that we'll pick it up. We'll, we'll touch it. We'll look at the price. We'll look at the pound. We'll look at how much it costs. We'll squeeze it. And some will say, no, nah, this is not the right one. And you'll put it back down and look at another one until you found the perfect turkey for your table which was hand-picked. In other words, it was chosen. Some of us who have ham on our Thanksgiving Day tainer, you'll do the exact same thing, that you go and you look at various hams, but you hand-pick the correct ham. That even when you go to the refrigerator aisle, the milk and dairy aisle, when you look at the eggs, you don't just grab the egg and throw it into the car, but you'll grab the egg and you open it up and you look and make sure there are no cracks in each and every individual egg. It, it's been hand pick that when you go through the fresh fruit aisle you don't just grab the fruit or you don't just grab the bunch of greens or anything you you ha carefully select which item you're going to pick and choose in other words it's been hand selected it's been chosen uh, I, I really never understood this concept of being chosen, Sister Prince, until I was a little child, and one of my favorite movies was called The Golden Child. I, I don't know if any of you all ever watched this, but it was released on December the 12th, 1986, and it, it dealt with the gentleman by the name of Eddie Murphy. You all may remember this movie, and Eddie Murphy uh, was working so hard that it had a little Tib a Tibetan boy who was typically called the golden child, that there was something so special about him that when he was taken away, Eddie Murphy's job was to go and to save the boy from where it is he was and to bring him back because he was hand-selected. He was the chosen ones, and you all remember that Eddie Murphy had to deal with a bunch of different task and he found himself what appeared to be in a dark place jumping on beans drinking water going through a bunch of litmus of tests only to find out that he had to follow his faith and trust what he believed in himself to rescue and save the chosen one 
yeah, I must admit that was one of my favorite movies growing up, but the thing I loved about it was the boy was chosen, but none of us understood why he was chosen. We just know, in fact, that he was chosen. But this morning, I come to share with somebody to let you all know that you are the chosen one. This morning, I'm preaching from the sermon topic, Chosen to Work that we, the Emmanuel Durham family, are the chosen one, but understand just because you are chosen does not mean that you can just sit on your high horse and not do anything. But when God calls you, that when God picks you, that when God chooses you, you are not chosen just to be served and to be waited on, but when God chooses you, you're chosen to do the work. Uh, uh, now we have to record, rewind back the hands of time because you would understand that God who created himself and wrapped himself through the virgin mother by the name of Mary and sent himself to walk the face of, face of this earth in the physical fleshly format of Jesus the Christ who was chosen to be God in heaven and God on earth. You then understand that Jesus was not chosen just to be served and to be waited upon, that Jesus Jesus was not chosen just to go and to perform miracles, but Jesus was chosen because there were work to be done, and he was chosen to do the work. That the problem with many of us is that once we're chosen, we think that we have now received a card that says exempt from doing the work. But you understand that when you are chosen, you're chosen for a particular task, and that task requires work. And I came to let somebody know this morning that it does not matter who you are or where you are, that when you are chosen by God, you are chosen to do the work. Yeah, somebody just typed that into the chat. I'm chosen chosen to do the work. I'm chosen to do the work. And so my brothers and sisters, the Bible lets us know huh, that Jesus said they were chosen. But look what happens. The Lord chose 70. Uh, the Lord chose 70 disciples to be called to do the work. And he sent them out in pairs to all the towns and places he had. This is the key word in the text, planned ED to visit. Not places he had already visited, but places that he was preparing to go to that he never made it to. Now, I know many of you all are asking the question, well, Pastor, why didn't Jesus just go down to the town himself and do the work himself? Because Jesus understood that he was now in a place dealing with a short period of time because he was prepared and about to face the crucifixion. But before he can deal with the crucifixion, Jesus understood that there was still more work to be done because there were more towns and villages and people in those towns and villages that had not yet heard his work, had not yet heard his voice, had not yet heard the ministry. And so Jesus understood, I'm hanging with 12 disciples, but before I deal with the 12, I need more than the 12 that I got so that I can send them ahead to deal with the towns that I will never visit. I came to let somebody know this morning that when God chooses you, you have to understand God already knows what's ahead and God needs your help to fulfill the great commission and the purpose and so many of us think that because we are chosen we don't have to do the work but now Jesus is showing us that when I choose you I'm calling you to a purpose because there's something that needs to be done that I need your assistance in getting it done to who am I talking to this morning I'm believing God has called the Emmanuel Durham family that on this week we'll be able to feed over 150 persons and families because we were chosen to do the work but look what the Bible says the Bible says Jesus never got to the town Jesus never got to the village but the people will still hear of Jesus not because Jesus physically went but because the people Jesus sent on his behalf I came to let somebody know that when we are chosen Emmanuel 
the people will be blessed by Jesus because of the work the people called. Jesus called the people to go do. In other words, when we be able to go out on this Tuesday, we are doing the great commission of God to be able to go to the places and to the people where Jesus physically did not go to, but Jesus still reached them because somebody understood, I'm chosen to do the work. Yeah, 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 I'm chosen to do the work. And when we are chosen to do the work, then you'll understand, my brothers and sisters, that the work will be fulfilled because we've been responsible to the one that called us to do the work. Uh, the problem with many of us uh, is that many of us don't do want to do the work uh, unless we get the accolades. The problem with many of us is that many of us don't want to do the work uh, unless we are rewarded for the work. But look what the text says. The Bible does not say that they were rewarded to do the work. Uh, the Bible does not say that they were responsible of the work. Uh, but the Bible says, uh, Jesus said, the harvest is great, but the workers are few. In other words, you ought to be excited that you were called to do the work. I know that don't sound right, but look what happens in the text. Jesus only chose 70 to do the work. Yeah, look at the Bible. That's what the Bible says. Is that what your Bible says? Jesus only chose 70 to do the work. Now, why would Jesus choose 70, Emmanuel? Uh, there, there, there were more than 70 persons around. So why did Jesus only choose 70 disciples? Why did Jesus only call a 70 to go and do the work? Did, 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 did the 70 represent the 70 translators of the Hebrew Bible into Greek? Hmm. Did, did, did the 70 uh, represent the 70 members of the Sanhedrin court? Hmm. Did, did the 70 represent the 70 elders who went out with Moses up to Mount Sinai? Hmm. Or did the 70 represent uh, possibly, just possibly, a number that Jesus just picked and said, I need 70 to go to the towns and do the work? Hmm. Now, 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 understanding that when we are called to do the work, look what happens. Nowhere in the text did it say the 70 names of the disciples that Jesus had called. Uh, it, 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 we don't even know their names. We don't know their pedigree. We don't know their background. We don't know their history. We just know the number was 70. In other words, Emmanuel family, that when we're called and chosen to do the work, that sometimes your name will not be called. That sometimes you may not be verbally recognized and or acknowledged for the work that you have done. <laughs> oh, who am I talking to this morning? <laughs> that sometimes when you're chosen to do the work, Jesus said the harvest is few, but the labor, the harvest is plenty, but the laborers are few. In other words, everybody can't do the work that you've been chosen to do. And Jesus knows the laborers are few. So I can only select a certain amount of number that's going to be about my father's business. Am I talking to anybody this morning that you can say, Pastor Akil, I may not have my name called. Pastor Akil, people may not know who I am, but I understand I, I'm not called to be recognized. I am not called so that people can recognize who I am, but I am called to do what God has called me to do. And if man never calls my name, as long as Jesus appointed me, then I'm ready to go. Is there anybody here this morning on the Sunday before Thanksgiving that you can say to yourself, you know what? I don't need nobody to know who I am because when God appoints me, I'm ready to do the work. All I'm simply trying to say in other words is I'd rather be appointed by God than called by man. Hold up. Stop. Wait a minute. Let me say that again. I'd rather be appointed by God than called by man. Oh, great God from Zion, that you understand when you are called by God, I don't need no certificate. I don't need no plaque. I don't need no croissage. I don't need no affirmation. I don't need no validation. I don't need no salutations. I don't need nobody to acknowledge me. But when God calls me, 
I'm ready to go. When God points me, I'm ready to do the work. Is there anybody here this morning on the Thanksgiving Sunday, you can say straight up a kill, I'm ready to do the work because I'm chosen by God. I'm chosen by God. Ah, uh, there's somebody this morning who's worshiping. You have been chosen by God. Your supervisor has overlooked you. Your teachers have overlooked you. Your co-workers have overlooked you. Your classmates have overlooked you. Your neighbors have overlooked you. Your pastor has may even overlooked you. But aren't you good? God never overlooks you. God knows you. God knows you. You. God knows you. God knows you. And because God knows who I am, I then understand I'm chosen by God to do the work. Yeah. I'm chosen to do the work. Look what the Bible says. The Bible says that after the 70 go out, Jesus says the harvest is few. Ah, the harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. Look what the text says. So pray to the Lord who is in charge of the harvest. So let's start right there. His instruction, the harvest is great. The laborers are few. But pray to the Lord who's in charge of the harvest and ask him to send more workers into his fields. Uh, look, look, look at verse number two. Look at verse number two. It starts off, look at verse two. I'm in, I'm in Luke chapter 10, verse two. These were his instructions. This is God. The, the harvest is great, but the laborers are few. Then look what he says, minister Elam. So pray to the Lord who is in charge of the harvest and ask God to send more workers into his fields. Uh, now, 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 allow me to paint this picture. Uh, imagine this is the field. And, and so God has called me into this vineyard, into this field. And so here is the instructions. The harvest is it's a lot. It's plentiful. This is the harvest of the Lord. God has called me to this harvest, and this is what God says. The harvest is great, but the workers are few. In other words, God is saying, I don't have enough dependable and reliable workers to do the work, so I'm calling you to the field to do the work. But then look at the text. The Bible says, the Bible says, so while I'm in the field, pray to the Lord. The Lord is the one who sent me to the field. But pray to the Lord and ask God, the one who's over the field, that I was sent to work in the field. Ask God to send more workers into his field. Oh, Emmanuel Durham, y'all missing it. Uh, let me give it to you like this. Here is the problem with the text that many of us do not understand because it sounds contradictory that it really don't make sense. But when you sit down and digest it and do deductive and inductive reasoning, then you understand what God is really trying to translate and say in the text. In other words, what Jesus is saying is that I'm sent to deal with this field. The work is great, but the workers are low. But because I've been appointed by God, God knows I can do the work. So I'm in the field doing the work, but God is letting you know ahead of time that the work is going to be worrisome. The work is going to be heavy. But while you are doing the work, it is then your job to pray to God and ask God to send the help to the fields that God has called you to work in. In other words, what God is really saying in verse number two, is that Jesus wants you to go start the work. Jesus wants you to go begin the work. But while you're doing the work, Jesus is saying, then you ask me to send workers to help you do what it is I've called you to do. In other words, I can't do it alone. But when we all get together and link up, what Jesus is saying is we can make a difference in the field that God called
calls us to. Uh, y'all not feeling me now, y'all not feeling me. Uh, let me help you out this way. Uh, praise him. If y'all can come up here, praise him. Come help me real quick. Uh, because I like to give illustrations, and I want you to see what it is. I'm simply trying to say in the text. And here is the text. Come on up here, praise him. Come on up here with me. Come on up here with me. Is that check this out? We're here on Riddle Road, but there's a problem down at Hillside High School. And so Jesus says, I'm going to show Pastor Akil the problem. But it's my responsibility to say, God, when you call me, I will go. And so I go to Hillside High School, but I understand I can't make a difference in Hillside High School by myself. And so Jesus says, when you get to Hillside, then you pray that God will send workers. And so as I prayed, what I noticed is I got brothers link up with my arm, link up with him, Brother McGill. And then when I pray, now I don't go to Hillside by myself, but we all go to Hillside. And so what I couldn't do by my own, we can all do together to make a difference because we stepped up to do the work because we are chosen to do the work. When we all connect and link up and do what God has called us to do, it only takes one, and that one starts with you. And when you go, God will send the increase, press down, shaking together, running over to fulfill the work. Thank you, brothers. Thank you, brothers. There's work to be done. There's work to be done at Hillside. There's work to be done at Jordan High School. There's work to be done at Riverside High School. There's work to be done at Northern High School. There's work to be done at Research Triangle High School. There's work to be done. That there's hospitals that need some men praying. There's work to be done at Duke University. There's work to be done at Select Specialty Hospital. There's work to be done at North Carolina Carolina specialty. There's work to be done. There's work to be done in the homeless shelters. There's work to be done at Durham Rescue. There's work to be done at Urban Ministries. There's work to be done at Interfaith Hospitality. There's work to be done. There's work to be done in our jails. There's work to be done at Durham Youth Center. There's work to be done at Durham County Detention Center. There's work to be done at Durham Correctional Institute. There's work to be done. But hold up, stop, wait a minute. Let me put some praise in it. There's work to be done in the church. There's work to be done on the steward board. There's work to be done on the trustee board. There's work to be done in the music department. There's work to be done on the usher board. There's work to be done on the ministerial staff. There's work to be done in the security ministry. There's work to be done in the stewardess. There's work to be done in YPD. There's work to be done in the lay organization. There's work to be done in the missionary society. There's work to be done and we are chosen to do the work. We just got to step up, step out, and understand the work is great, but the laborers are few. But when we all do it together, we can change this church. We we can change this city. We can change this state. We can change this nation. There's work to be done. I'm chosen to make a difference. But not just me. Jesus said, there's 70 of y'all. <laughs> but the text says that when that 70 goes and do the work, pray that God will send more workers. In other words, if God just sent one with each of that 70, it multitudes into 140. What am I trying to say? There's work to be done, Emmanuel family. That if only 70 of us return on the first Sunday of December, that's fine. Because we're called to go out and to reach at least one. And if all of us fulfill the Great Commission by going out to do the work and if reaching at least one, by the second Sunday, we'll have 140 in here. 
But you know what? If you take that 140 and we all go out and reach one, by the third Sunday, we'll have 280. In other words, all I'm simply trying to say is you got to play your part and know your role and do what God has called you to do. Amen. That we can make a difference. But it starts with you. And you can't worry about him. You can't worry about her. You can't worry about them or them folks back there. You just got to worry about yourself and do what God has called you to do because you are chosen. Chosen comes with a price and a responsibility. It comes with doing work. And that's what the Emmanuel Durham is stepping up to do, is to do the work. This Tuesday, we're feeding over 150 because God has called us to do the work. But imagine if every person we come into contact with, if we spread the gospel, we invite them to church. Even if all 150 families don't come, if half that comes, we've done our, what God has called us to do. That we can't get caught up on who's doing their part, we just got to be worried about doing our part and let God finish it. We just got to go out and start it. My brother and my sister, you have been chosen to do the work. But this morning, somebody, you feel that you're chosen, but you don't know who you're chosen by. And this morning, I want to introduce you to Jesus. I want to introduce you to the one that has called you, the one that has appointed you, the one that's leading you and giving you instructions, the one who knows which way you're supposed to go because you're called to do the work. His name is Jesus the Christ, our Lord and Savior, the one who suffered, bled, and died on an old rugged cross just for you. And this morning, Jesus wants to be the one that you take your instructions from. But Jesus wants you to commit, connect, and to surrender to him. So if you're not saved, you've never surrendered your will to God's will, and this morning you're saying, Pastor Akil, I want to be saved. Even into the chat, you can just write salvation. You can just put saved. Or you can send us an email to emmanuelamec.com, and we'll respond to you. If you're not saved and you so desire to be saved, you don't have to wait till Thursday to be thankful, but every day with Jesus is a day of thanksgiving. Amen. If you don't have a church home, and this morning you're saying, Pastor, I want to connect with the Emmanuel Durham family. You can comment into the chat church, amen, or even underneath. You can send us an e email at emmanuelamec.com. You can go to our website, or you can send us an email, amen. The information is right there under the screen. We will be honored to be your church family. I will be honored to be your pastor. But more importantly, we would be grateful that we can do the work together. That is work to be done. The harvest is great but the laborers are few. I believe God is calling you. You're chosen to do the work. God, in the name of Jesus, we thank you, God, for that man, that woman, that boy and girl who understands that they are chosen. God, who's accepting and taking on the responsibility of stepping out on faith to start the work. And But God, as we continue to work, help us to pray to you that you would send help and support to fulfill the work that you have called us to do. That God, we understand we can't do it on our own, but with you we can do all things but fail. So be with each and every one of us during this Thanksgiving season. Keep us, protect us, comfort us, and allow us to understand that we're not thankful because of the food on the table, but we're thankful because you have chosen us to do the work. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. God bless you, my brother and sister. Now is the part of the worship service where we can all participate. There are four ways that you can be a blessing here to the Emmanuel Durham family. Four ways that you can give. The first way is you can look at our website, emmanuelamec.com, and you can give on our website. The second way is what I like to call the OG way. You can get a check, put it into an envelope, a money order, put it into an envelope, amen, and mail it to Emmanuel AME Church. 
2018 Riddle Road, Durham, North Carolina, 27713. The information is right there beneath if you would like to mail. The third way is you can get your elect electronic device. You can go to the app called GiveLify. And on GiveLify, you can look up Emmanuel Amy Church, Durham, North Carolina. You can give through GiveLify. And the fourth way on your cellular device, you can go to Cash App. That's dollar sign E-A-M-E-C 2018. The information is right there underneath. Those are the four ways that you can give here in the Emmanuel Amy Church. In the event that you say, you know what, Pastor, I have not been able to give to be a support, to be a blessing to those 150 families in Durham, but I still want to connect and partner with the Emmanuel Durham family. You can give even right now. In the memo section, you can put Thanksgiving Outreach. Amen. And those proceeds will go to the outreach of being able to feed those who are hungry, those who are less fortunate, those who would perhaps go without. We thank you in advance. We pray for you. We give God honor, praise, and glory for the work that God is calling us to do. The work is great, but the laborers are few. And we thank God for the faithful few laborers who've been partnering and working with us to fulfill what God has called us to do. Amen, amen, and amen. I pray that God will bless you richly and abundantly this Thanksgiving season. On this Thursday, enjoy your time with your family and friends. In the event that you know somebody who does not have family in the immediate area, won't you be kind and reach out and extend and welcome them and embrace them into your home? or simply somebody you know who's in a hospital, you may just want to go by and drop them a plate. It'll be a blessing to them wherever they may be, my brother and my sister. Amen. Remember, the work is great, but the laborers are few. We praise God for these musicians. We praise God for these men. They're going to come back and lift up a song and praise and take us out of here on this Thanksgiving Day season. Amen. May God bless you. May the peace of God keep you. May God lead you, guide you, direct you, and order your steps. And may God remind you that you are chosen to do the work. The work is great, but the labors are few. Go in peace, my brother. God bless you. Yeah.
That's why we sing Lord. 